then Reagan came into power. And St. Louis was still in the ascendancy and they were floundering around, around for solutions. What are we going to do? We overdid it with the action in, in early 79. Inflation's under control, but things are just all screwed up. We need a different model. That's where Kansas City came in. This is where I started getting involved in the mix. I started reading the Kansas City Fed papers and, and tracking uh, Craig Hockio and Gordon Sellen and actually Wayne Angel and, and others. It was a whole brain trust of incredibly smart and brilliant people that just put the simplistic St. Louis Fed cretins to shame. And, and here's what the Kansas City group was saying is they were saying, look, we don't want inflation. We're all learning our lessons from the hyperinflation of Germany. And if you don't know about the hyperinflation in November of, of 1923 in Germany, you better go study it, because that's what caused Adolf Hitler to arise. The hyperinflation in Germany was several thousand percent in one day within November of 1923. The beer putsch first started by Hitler was in that very month. In that month, Hitler, in his beer pooch in Bavaria, demanded the right for the workers to be to have three long breaks a day, so they could go shopping three times a day instead of two times a day, because prices would go up every hour. And Hitler demanded that beer workers be allowed to have longer breaks, so that they could go shopping before their money was completely worthless. I, it was several million percent uh, back in November of 1923. The hyperinflation. Hitler was jailed for that in November of 23, and he was so angry, and I'm not justifying him at all, but he was so infuriated that he wrote Mein Kampf. So there's a clear link between the rise of fascism and hyperinflation, and all of us, central bankers everywhere, are absolutely committed that that's never going to happen again. It isn't, period. We learned the lesson from Hitler, okay? So that's where we start from, and that's what the Kansas City Fed said. The Kansas City Fed said, to St. Louis and the other branches, and even to Paul Volcker, look, we hate inflation just as much as you do, but you don't know anything about what is causing inflation. You, 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 it's more than just the price of gold or the, the monetary base. We live in a complex economy. Why don't we use other tools to monitor inflation? Why don't, for example, we use the Commodity Research Bureau Index? We'll take uh, a basket of uh, grains and and other uh, commodities, including gold and silver, but not just gold, just gold, not just that, a whole array of commodities. And, and let's track that. You know, we want to monitor inflation rates, but, y y you know, there's more to it than just the price of gold and, you know, the monetary, you know, M1B. It's, we live in more complicated times than Neanderthal simplistic models proposed by Friedman. Now here's what happened. We had a big crisis. It was, it was called the BAM crisis in 1982, in the summer of 1982. BAM, Brazil, Argentina, and Mexico, and they were all going belly up. And this was the first of several once in a million year events that first rattled the financial markets and brought it to its knees. The Fed allowed the monetary aggregates to grow, but. In, in fact, one of the steepest rises in monetary growth ever. You can go back and look at your little charts. The most dramatic rises in, mo in money supply in the history of the Federal Reserve was in, from the summer of 1982 to 1983. That nine-month to one-year period, Milton Friedman was apoplectic. We're going to have hyperinflation. The sky is falling, said Chicken Little. The sky is falling. He went on all the TV programs. He went on the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times. I want a Nobel Prize. The sky is falling. We're going to have hyperinflation because the monetary base is growing at an unbelievable rate. Oh, my goodness. What are we going to do? And so the Messiah predicted, you know, the end of the world, and it never happened. Where was the hyperinflation since from 1982 to now? It's been 25 years. Now, if the Federal Reserve raised interest rates dramatically tomorrow, let's say they raised the discount rate by 3%, let's say they raised the Fed funds target by 3%, the economy crashes, you can ask yourself, well, when's that hyperinflation that Milton Friedman predicted 25 years ago from that rise in the monetary base going to arrive? Gee, Fred, I don't know. We better buy gold. Please. 
There's more to it than that. Here was another key part of the analysis that, that made the monetary base narrow focus of Milton Friedman and the others virtually worthless. We're all interested. We all hate inflation. We're not going to repeat Weimar. But it is more than just the monetary base. Here was the key point that Lindley Clark, the key Fed beat reporter for the Wall Street Journal, missed for 17 years. He still didn't get it. I made jokes with key, the staff director of monetary policy for the New York Fed about how clueless Lindley Clark was about this. And here was the gig. Here it is. We know Reagan deregulated banking. And so what we, what we had was the creation of all these new actors in the, in the money creation field, non-bank actors, and also we had different types of accounts. We didn't just have checking accounts. We didn't just have savings accounts anymore with their pretty straight lines of velocity as they course and amplified through the economy at differential rates. That was long gone with banking deregulation and it's 25 years ago or, or more. It's history. You know, it, the times have changed. Get out of the 60s. Remember SuperNow accounts? Remember Schwab 1 accounts? These were introduced, for example, and Merrill has their counterparts as well. These were introduced in 1982 as a part of banking deregulation. Now, these combined a savings component and a checking component. In other words, you needed a $2,500 minimum balance in a SuperNow account to earn interest on your checking account. You know, back before, when Milton Friedman won his Nobel, you used to earn money on interest on your savings account, but not on your checking. And so there were differential incentives for whether you put your money in your savings or your checking account. But with the birth of hybrid accounts, where you had to keep at least $2,500 in your checking account, but then it was an interest-bearing checking account, then people's behavior changed. And Milton Friedman and the Wall Street Journal and others never caught on to it, and many viewers, unfortunately, of these videos still haven't understood that vital distinction. So here's what the Kansas City Fed said.